Cool. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Shatman from Good City Foundation. Today, we are live with our webinar and podcast series, City and the Cities. We're in our sixth episode. And today, we have the team from Palestine here to share about how Palestine is tackling the COVID-19 issue and also how Palestinian innovation is changing uh, the landscape of Palestinian entrepreneurship ecosystem, uh, how Palestinian young people are bringing changes in uh, edutech and health tech as well. And uh, we have had this webinar together with uh, the Global Shapers Ramallah Hub and uh, Gaza Sky Geeks and the friends from the Shapers Ramallah Hub who are tackling some of the most pressing issues in Palestine, in health, in education, and to build up the entrepreneurship ecosystem here. Um, so today we'll be talking about these three things as we know, and then uh, we have a couple of speakers. Uh, we will keep it uh, very casual and easy, and we will talk about some of the very detailed insights which we often might not get into mainstream media. And uh, we will try to learn about uh, very deep insight from the young people. So uh, first, before we have uh, the discussion and move into the topics, I will uh, invite Lamis from uh, Global Shape Ashram Allah Hub. She's the curator of uh, Global Shape Ashram Allah Hub. So I will invite Lamis to share her insights uh, about Global Shape Ashram Allah Hub, what is Global Shape Ashram Allah Hub and what you guys are doing. And then I'll move on to the topic uh, as we have the speakers ready here. So Lamis, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Shadman, uh, very much. On behalf of all the Global Shapers from Allah Hub, we thank you and we are very glad of having this uh, amazing uh, webinar with you and with the Good City Foundation. So, uh, first of all, as a start, I will have a quick overview about the Global Shapers in general for anyone who didn't know. So, Global Shaper is an initiative from the World Economic Forum uh, it started uh, in 2011, and uh, the aim of it that that young people that share the same thoughts and share the matter of helping the uh, the community with uh, in terms of uh, you know like entrepreneurship, uh, health, education, and a lot of things. And these young people uh, ages from 20 to 30 and now uh, in the global we are uh, in uh, more than 400 cities and with 10,000 chapter around the world in Palestine uh, we are glad that we have four hubs in Palestine so the old uh, hub in Palestine is Ramallah and uh, we have in Nablus and also in Gaza and East Jerusalem hub. Yeah, exactly. and from Allah, we have these amazing uh, shapers here and they will uh, tell their stories about different projects uh, like uh, Rula Hanin, Hamdi, uh, uh, Dawood and Gaida. So uh, I will not be, I will not talk a lot, uh, but because they will uh, describe very nice uh, the projects that we are working on. But in general, Ramallah, we are the oldest hub in Palestine. We established in 2011. Uh, the godfather of Ramallah hub was uh, Mr. Kamil Al Husseini. And now we are 25 uh, members working in a lot of um, projects that matter uh, the people uh, in terms of uh, education health, uh, empowerment, uh, entrepreneurship. Um, uh, and I will leave the floor for the next speaker, talk more. Uh, Amazing. Uh, thank you so much, Lamis, for the sharing. And uh, thank you so much about for the uh, having time uh, with us. And uh, we will have, uh, we'll learn from you more after that. Uh, but before we go to the discussion, a brief context about my learning about Palestine. Uh, so first of all, Palestine has been a very interesting place for me. I have been learning about the culture there, the food, and the people as well. And then while learning about the entrepreneurship and startup ecosystem in Palestine, I came to know that uh, because of some of the issues in the borders, uh, you know, the transportation is all, not always easy. It's not always easy for uh, the people from Palestine to move to the other parts of the world. But then how Palestine has used the power of technology and tech innovation 
to boost the entrepreneurship ecosystem and the startups there. Um, the ecosystem looks pretty uh, fertile already. There are some of the successful uh, startups which have been working successfully in Palestine and also have been um, working abroad. Uh, we have seen some really successful co-working spaces, incubators, uh, and other uh, components of the ecosystem builders. So we can say that the Palestinian ecosystem is very much based on technology. Technology is scalable beyond broad borders, right? Technology can connect Ramallah to Tokyo, uh, Jerusalem to, to uh, Hong Kong, uh, and maybe Gaza to, say, uh, New York and so on. And how can we uh, co-create and, and you know, scale up the solutions through internet and through technology? That's something we would love to know. So here we have Daud, and uh, uh, with Daud, we will actually uh, learn about the, how this ecosystem looks like because he has been working very closely with the startup ecosystem in Palestine. What are the innovations and so on? And also, he will uh, give us perspective about uh, how the startups are facing some problems and how can we actually work on um, solving the issues which the Palestinian uh, startups are facing. Um, I believe Daud is uh, here with us. Daud, can you hear us? Hello, Daud, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you now for sure. Amazing, Daud. So Daud, that would be great if you could give a brief introduction to our viewers about yourself and what you are doing, and then we will dig deep into the topic of uh, startup ecosystem in Palestine. Yes, uh, so I'm currently working on a startup center called Mission Startup Center. Uh, we work on three ends. Uh, the first so um, this, uh, this came out of the gaps that we have identified in the Palestinian ecosystem. One, uh, advocacy relating to culture. The other is research using the data in order to enable Palestinian entrepreneurs to not only create companies in Palestine, but scale in the MENA region. And then the third thing is, is acceleration, providing very early stage uh, funding for Palestinian entrepreneurs uh, that need it. So that's my main focus. I've also been very involved with the Global Shapers community. We're currently working on an entrepreneurship uh, project that uh, goes under the advocacy of mission, but also under the mission of uh, Global Shapers uh, Ramallah Hub. Um, so we're currently working on the course. We're actually almost done uh, with the course script. Um, we're soon gonna go ahead and, and shoot the whole thing and share it with Palestinian youth so that any Palestinian um, young uh, individual, male or female, will be able to access um, that course and get very, very basic information about entrepreneurship that will get them going. That's my main focus when it comes to entrepreneurship in, in Palestine. That's amazing. And as we know that each city's entrepreneurship ecosystem have their own nature, right? And uh, recently I was studying about Palestine. I was also studying about Nepal. Uh, just like Nepal's, uh, startup ecosystem is making the best use of their maker space and uh, you know usage of drone usage of uh, 3d printing and so on to tackle some of the pressing issues of uh, the country and the cities there um, reading about palestine we came to know as i was uh, mentioning before that it's a lot about tech startups and tech entrepreneurship so my first question for you would be why do you think uh, tech entrepreneurship is like very much essential for palestinian economy and the society and why is the search there? Uh, what's the what's the reason behind it? I, I heard part of you. Yeah. Doubt, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, do we have Doug here or? Uh, I think Doug is having maybe technical issues. So, um, so yeah, um, as we were sharing that, um, the startup ecosystem of Palestine is uh, quite new, quite growing, and uh, some of the problems are there. So Doug will be getting back to us uh, to share about that. 
But before that, uh, let's shift our focus on the, the education side and the tech uh, education sector of uh, Palestine and how the, the Global Shapers here and the Gaza Sky Geek is coming up with uh, programs which is focusing on educating the young Palestinian um, generation. And uh, as a part of that, first, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Hanin here and uh, also uh, I'll invite uh, Rula here to share about uh, the the overall education sector and how they are coming up with a uh, solution to handle that. So uh, first, Hanin, um, that would be great if you could introduce yourself to us and uh, about your work and so on. So hi, everyone. My name is Hanin Badr and I live in Ramallah and I am part of uh, Global Shapers since almost two years. And I work as a program assistant at uh, Gaza Sky Geeks program uh, and I help in expanding the programs of Gaza Sky Geeks in West Bank uh, mm -hmm. because we started in Gaza and now we are having um, some of our programs in West Bank. So I work mm -hmm. on this. That would be that would be really interesting to learn about Gaza Sky Geek itself more. Could you please yeah. explain what's the nature of Gaza Sky Geek? Yeah. What are uh, the programs and how it all uh, actually started um, initially? Yeah, so Gaza Sky Geeks is a program that was founded in 2011 as a partnership between Google and an international NGO called Mercy Corps. Uh, we began holding the first startup weekends in uh, Gaza and expanding the education about the tech entrepreneurship uh, for Gazans. Uh, when uh, Google for Startups first met, uh, visited Gaza, they found that there are too many uh, people who has talent and they can like have programs for them. Uh, in 2014, we began working with individual startup founders uh, to grow their businesses in Gaza. And then in 2015, we, fa we facilitated the first venture in the investment into Gazan startups. And today we have the biggest co-working space in Gaza for Startup Accelerator, for technology education and for freelancers and coders. Uh, we have like four programs or three programs actually. Uh, the first one is a co the Coding Academy. The Coding Academy is a six month uh, career bootcamp accelerator, accelerator for developers uh, who want to become uh, junior web developers who are ready to work on the tech on tech companies. Uh, uh, people can join the Coding Academy if they have no knowledge about developing. And then uh, after graduating from uh, this uh, academy, they become junior dev uh, web developers and ready to enter the market. Uh, the other program is the Skylancer Academy, which is a 12 uh, month week freelancing mentorship program. Uh, it's for p young people who have talent uh, like uh, web developing or graphic design, translation, social media, mobile development, or other uh, talents that can let them work in, uh, in freelancing and become freelancing uh, freelancers on uh, international and national platforms so they can find jobs and earn money. And the third one is the Geek Accelerator, which is a 16-week pre-seed accelerator program for startups. Uh, it's for startups who has ideas and want to make a business from or startup from these ideas. Uh, the, it's divided into three phases, phases uh, the business case validation and the coding and development and launching and publicity. Uh, the last thing that Gaza Sky Geeks is special about and offer for their community is the mentorship program. You know that Gaza is isolated and people are not really exposed to the other places in the world. So we bring the mentors from outside the world and uh, make them share their knowledge and experiences with Gazans uh, to know more uh, about what is happening outside and to share the experience and mentor other people. So at the end of the session, I will share our website. So if anyone is interested to learn more about Gaza Sky Geeks or want to be apply to be a mentor and visit Gaza after the pandemic, they can do it. Or we are now doing it online. So you can apply to help uh, us and the community in their work. 
that's amazing and uh, when we were talking like we have been in touch for for almost a month right we have been yeah. getting calls we have been you know developing the deeper concept note so while doing that i came to know about a very interesting thing that gaza sky geek uh, launched the first ever virtual hackathon in palestine yeah. can you please explain a bit about that uh, how yeah. uh, it was and you know what were the finding from the the hackathon so one of the things that we did through through this pandemic and through COVID-19 that we launched the first virtual hackathon ever in Palestine. Uh, it took place between the 15th and 18th of April with, in partnership with the World Health Organization, the UNICEF and the UNFPA and other corporates and governments. This was the special thing about this hackathon. It was like a cooperation between the public and private sector and the organizations. Uh, uh, during these days, we did the hackathon totally online. Everything was remote. We got more than 1,000 participants and more than 50 mentors. And this uh, teamed up into about 130 teams. Um, the 130 teams worked for three days on uh, finding solutions that can be implemented in Palestine to uh, hack the COVID-19 here in Palestine. And at the end of the hackathon, we had four um, winning uh, teams. The four winning teams had a $35,000 cash prize splitted among the top, uh, uh, these top four teams. And we also had some in-kind donations from the partners we had, like accelerating or helping or mentorship or free spaces after the hackathon. And uh, the four uh, winning teams uh, were like uh, finding solutions for the areas of education, economics, and uh, health and health awareness for the people for people in Palestine. And all of them were uh, high tech education. And the, 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 the Hack of the Crisis Palestine that Gaza Sky Geeks did was totally virtual. Like the, even the teams uh, met on Slack and everything was virtual. We had national and international mentors who helped the team to came up with, uh, after coming up with the idea to implement it and make the codes and the presentation and the pitches for the judges. I see, that's amazing. So during this uh, COVID crisis, you know, uh, while people are, you know, panic, people are thinking how we can run the usual things. You came up with this uh, virtual yeah. uh, hackathon, and that brought up some really successful projects. Uh, you are giving some very initial seed money uh, for the startups to, uh, you know, uh, get launched, uh, giving uh, mentorship and so on. Uh, so regarding that, also, like, uh, do you have any plan to do uh, further hackathons and the existing code academy, startup academies you have been mentioning? How do you foresee the future of this uh, initiatives uh, during the corona crisis? Like if I think about the whole year of 2020, uh, what are the new, uh, you know, I'd say, how are you pivoting some of your works you are doing? Uh, if you could give a view about that. Yeah, so Gazika Geeks is one of the organizations that really coped fast with uh, the COVID-19. Uh, from We didn't stop uh, delivering our programs uh, any days. Uh, we did all. We continued with all our programs virtually, uh, both the freelancing academy and uh, a startup academy. Uh, sorry, the, the freelancing academy and the coding academy are running virtually now. We had one cohort that had their uh, graduation celebration last week, and it was virtual. The coding academy people are working uh, from home, and they are doing their projects and their uh, sessions from home. The other thing is that we started our uh, new uh, idea lab uh, for, for the Startup Academy, and we're still running all our programs. Uh, and we are planning to still deliver all what we are delivering online until we can like go back to our normal life. That's amazing. So what I can see is that overall Gaza Sky Geek is also like by the name uh, is Gaza Sky Geek, but it's also working in other parts of Palestine, right? In Ramallah, like yeah. in the over West Bank, uh, Gaza Sky Geek is uh, working. And uh, overall, what we can see is that Gaza Sky Geek is playing a big role to uh, work as a launch pad for the young people uh, to, you know, get into entrepreneurship and get their practical skills uh, more, uh, you know, developed so that they can 
uh, do better professionally. And talking about you know how things are going virtual, see you know uh, it is a very good ground for us to see how social media and online platforms uh, can play a role to uh, you know reduce the gap between the existing education system we have. Uh, as a part of that, Rula from Global Shapers Ram Al Hub is uh, running a project, and uh, that would be great if Rula you could share that. How do you see social media's role in Palestine, in Palestine to uh, reduce the gap in the current education system and how the Global Shapers uh, Ramal Lahab is tackling that issue? That would be great if you could share a bit uh, about that. For sure, Shadna. First of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Rula Aude. I'm from Jerusalem. I'm an electronics engineering. Um, I'm working on empowering youth and women in different sectors. Uh, actually, Shadman, this is a great question. Social media plays an important role in awareness creation, especially in education, and it provides the best mood of communication to many organizations in the present world. So it simply builds an idea of env environment to uh, interact where people can meet and share their ideas safely without any commitment. So today in 2020, the statistics that says 3.5 8 million people use social media, which is more than a half of the population in this world. And the average daily use is 144 minutes, which means two hours and 24 minutes. So the communication in social media and spreading the awareness will be cover a big part of this world. So social media can we reach from Palestine, many different in the world. So I can reach USA, I can reach Bangladesh, I can reach many different countries with my knowledge and the awareness. So I prefer exactly. using social media in spreading awareness and many youth, like 30, I think 31% of the youth, taking their awareness from social media instead of their yeah. parents or their privilege that they near from them. Exactly, exactly. Like from my personal experience as well, like um, apart from the classes I have been taking, uh, you know, going to the universities and colleges, a big part of my education system has been covered by social media, casual learning, you know, and uh, YouTube has played a big role. Online education platforms have played a big role. And what I have been learning uh, through my friends in Palestine, as I have a lot of friends in Palestine, I see that Palestinian young people are very active on online and they have adopted the, you know, technological aspects of it. Uh, so, do, do you have any more uh, sharing about, you know, how uh, the Global Shapers from Allah Hub foresees uh, to play a role in using social media platform uh, to educate people? And then what are the key gaps you see in the education system in Palestine where the, the Global Shapers from Allah Hub and some of the projects can play a role uh, to fit in the, you know, the actual market and the actual work field in 2020? How would you, uh, you know, share about that? What, what's your take on that? Yeah, actually, as a global shapers Ramallah, we always make our posts full of like information that helps people, especially the youth. So our audience from 18 to 20, actually 30. So this is our audience, our platform. So we make sure to spreading the, in, the exact information and the correct information. During the pandemic, there's many of myths about COVID-19 and uh, some of people who get like uh, depressed and they can't believe any, any information that they will read it on social media. So we, as a global shaper, making very specific posts uh, during our social media campaign I started I started it and uh, uh, I started the campaign and I start spreading the positivity first and then uh, correct and facts about COVID-19 so as a global shaper we targeted the youth uh, as Hanin said, we made uh, the partnership with uh, Gaza Sky Geeks and it was great. And we have many, many of you who shared th this with us and have a good solution of COVID-19. And I'm also passionate about health and especially the mental health uh, during the COVID-19 period. So I'm working also to spread information about the mental health and how you can like doing meditation, uh, relax during where you are in state uh, in the quarantine. So exactly. I will leave the floor for my friend uh, Reida. She's now exactly. working on a project with the Global Shapers about mental health. So exactly. yeah, this is it. 
So, yeah, definitely. Thanks, you. Th thanks a lot uh, for sharing about what you are doing. And then uh, we have a big sharing by Gaida and the team from Inhale Excel to share about um, how mental health issues are tackled by the global shapers in Ramallah and how the overall uh, scenario looks like, uh, what are the myths regarding mental health and so on. Uh, but before that, uh, I believe we have uh, Daud back to us. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would like to uh, focus on the entrepreneurship and startup ecosystem uh, through Daud, and then we will move to Raida uh, and Taima after that. Uh, Daud, do we have you with us? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can I can see you. You are here. Uh, okay. So welcome back. And uh, before um, before that, we were talking about um, we see tech entrepreneurship is in the surge in Palestine. So you were sharing some of the factors behind it. Uh, so that would be great if you could restart from there and then uh, i'll follow uh, you with some of the questions uh, i'm very keen to learn from you so please Daud, uh, go ahead yeah well i think there are many many layers to it um i think the reality in palestine is quite clear to many people on the inside and the outside of it and for me and for many people here that are working on tech entrepreneurship tech and, and, and entrepreneurship um, and startups themselves are a way out um, and you know, for many of us, uh, you know, in many other countries around the world, borders are quite open. There are not that many restrictions that you can see. But nowadays in Palestine, and in many countries around the world, uh, a savvy entrepreneur can launch an application from an incubator and market it to thousands of individuals online and offline. And that represents an opportunity for all of us. So I think for, when it comes to Palestinian economy and society, uh, us utilizing technology is something that we shouldn't miss. You know, I hear a lot of people that say, um, you know, back in 1980, 1990, uh, computers were a very vague uh, term. You know, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates were trying to explain to people what the hell computers are. And now we're in 2020, and it seems as everyone's saying, you know, the battle is lost. It's not a battle. You know, it's like, uh, you know, we can't catch up and be able to, uh, to innovate when it comes to technology. But we're just starting. Um, and this is the opportunity that we all have here um, as Palestinians and also as individuals who live in the Arab world. We can definitely catch up. We can definitely come up with um, innovative models and innovative startups. But what we need to do is at the same time just understand that um, this will take quite a lot of work to make it happen. Uh, but I think it's yeah. absolutely possible. So I think for us here in Palestine, it's definitely an opportunity. Um, we should we should utilize it as much as possible. There are many restrictions, um, which you know yeah. all of us are aware of, but none of it is something that we can't overcome. So I'm very optimistic about the opportunities here in Palestine. For us. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, problems are everywhere, pretty much. Uh, while working in uh, emerging countries, uh, we have been seeing some of the most uh, passionate entrepreneurs, but then they are facing some uh, really big issues in the ecosystem. Uh, the, the ecosystem in Palestine is quite new. Uh, and then there, there definitely are uh, different gaps. So uh, do you foresee gaps in, in the funding sector and also gap in the in the policy as well? You know, some of the policies which might be making entrepreneurship really hard, launching a new business hard and, you know, money transaction and all these things hard so that no matter how savvy people are, some of the policy issues might be, um, you know, harming the progress or maybe lack of funding is playing a big role. Uh, what are the gaps you see, uh, Daud, from your perspective here in the uh, Palestinian ecosystem? You know, honestly, one thing that I've been very involved in in the past year is just the research component on the ecosystem locally. Um, I started in 2016, my master's thesis was on it, and it always comes back, uh, and I want to make that clear from the beginning, to the fact that whatever gap there is, um, there's always a way around it. So if the gaps don't exist, that would be absolutely great, but there are many, many um, things that you can you know, maneuver around, um, as they would say. But one of the one of the things that I could um, emphasize when it comes to the gaps that we see, you can call them gaps, you can call them weaknesses, you can call them spaces for improvement, uh, whatever they are. Um, it, it, firstly, it really depends on the industry and the individual. There are certain industries that you can get into um, when it comes to technology itself that will be quite easy to uh, to manage and, and start, and there are other ones that will be more complicated. And I can get into that a bit um, uh, later on. But I want to discuss three things when it comes to the gaps. Uh, first thing is the culture. Second thing is education, and the third thing is funding. Um, when it comes to funding, um, I don't think there is any uh, gap when it comes to being able to get an, an investment if you've achieved a specific amount of growth. But unfortunately, we don't have the same support for individuals that are just starting. Um, we, we have people that could be absolutely brilliant in their field and have a simple idea, and I don't believe they're getting the support that they should be getting. Um, and I always say this, five, $10,000 is not going to get um, anyone anywhere. What we need to do is 
is invest in these individuals um, and, and say, you know, here's, here's a specific amount of money for a specific equity in your company. I'm going to support you all the way, but this is a very serious, um, you know, very serious journey that you will undertake. So, and, and this is another point I want to make. Uh, grants also don't work. Uh, when it comes to investments, the, in, the incentive changes uh, because you're able to provide someone with an amount of money expecting some sort of return. And return, yeah. your incentive change because you want to support the individual and also the startup incentive change. So when I say, you know, being able to support the startups, um, one of the biggest ways we can support them is stop giving them grants and start giving them investments that are actually suitable for their, uh, for their needs. The final thing I want to say is, is more in relation to education. And to put it frankly, um, individuals, um, students in our classrooms at the high school and on the university level are not being challenged in their classrooms enough. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to take the process more seriously. Um, if you have a doctor or an engineer that is learning in a specific university, IT needs to be taken exactly as seriously. Um, and I don't think that, you know, and, and this is not my talk, I'm, I, you, know, you can ask a lot of computer science IT students about the, the amount of challenge that they get in their classrooms, and it's nowhere near enough. Uh, we actually have a lot of people in the United States or other countries where the students are, you know, when they finish fourth year, they're able to do things that are absolutely amazing. And, Palestinian students can do exactly the same, but they just need to be challenged in the classroom. The teacher needs to demand more from them. Uh, the professor needs to, be, uh, to demand more of them. Um, and the final point is just on culture. And, and the cultural component is actually one of the components that are missed by governments across the world when it comes to how important um, it is to entrepreneurship. We need to balance it. On one hand, we need to be very clear on the complexity of starting a startup, but we need to become more inclusive on who starts a startup. You don't need to have good English to have a startup that is successful. You don't need to come from a specific socioeconomic background. You don't need to be a man, et cetera, et cetera. It can be anyone um, passionate and understands the complexity of it. So we need yeah. to spread the geographical zones where entrepreneurial activity is taking place. And, and that's, I would say, the final gap that, that I would be able to check back. I see. And, and, but then I have also seen a very good, uh, interesting characteristics in the Palestinian ecosystem is that many of the startup owners and many leading people in the startup ecosystem are women. And uh, that's, that's playing a big role in, I believe, uh, to break the cultural barriers uh, to some extent. When, uh, first off, you know, going for entrepreneurship is not always preferred as a safe profession um, from my country, to your country, in many parts of the world. Uh, but then when women and people are coming out and you know they're doing great i believe these are the people uh, the country should look up to and they have a big role to play in the education system uh, so that you know they make sure the education system is something which is needed for the market so that you know, there is a lack of, less gap between the existing education system and the market requirement something like that and for the funding uh, as we were talking before you were specifically trying to see that uh, why um, many of the funders are investing in the already developed startups, uh, and, but then how it can be channeled to the very new early startups so that everyone can work together. Um, and then there are some of the uh, interesting things I'd love to know that. So we heard that the Palestinian Monetary Authority recently uh, issued instructions to operate and provide electronic payment services, which include both e-wallet and prepaid cards. So does it mean, uh, enable people without bank accounts uh, to complete their financial transaction without the use of cash? And what could this mean to the Palestinian startups? Uh, I believe it's a new thing in Palestine and how the startups are coping up with that. Can you please uh, share a bit about that? Well, I think that's a great question. It's, a, it's very important because it's, um, you know, the question itself focuses on the uh, recent developments from the Palestinian Monetary Authority and the Palestinian government. Um, and I think, you know, generally we can talk about what certain support the Palestinian government has been uh, providing, um, which, you know, in, in a general sense, I would say the best thing a government can do is just lay off the entrepreneur and just be able to let them do their thing. You know, as long as the government isn't involving too much, then the entrepreneur is just fine. Um, so that's the way they can help. Uh, but then one of the other ways that the Palestinian Monetary Authority, they, they authorize the, that usage, not necessarily the usage, the creation of these e-wallets. I mean, there are two equations to this. Number one, um, this would be great if it works, and it's a big if, because I've seen a couple of the apps that um, have been out, and there's still a lot of iterations that they will have to do until it becomes trustworthy to the user, because eventually it's your money inside of that wallet. 
You want to be able to use it on a daily basis. It's, it, it needs to represent this ability for you to do transactions, etc. So the apps need to be flawless. Um, and so far, I haven't been seeing that. I think it will take a lot of time until these big companies adapt the whole thing and be able to come up with applications and, and portals that you can use online that will be useful for the individual and, and, and they can use it on a transaction. Basis. Um, let's say this happens and it's actually beneficial. Um, and it's actually, you know, the app works, you're able to, to do your transactions, and they actually make available a portal online, so you can pay online through the e-wallet. Um, this would be amazing for startups that are locally based, that are piloting in Palo Alto. So rather than having to do cash or, um, or, or, you know, previous ways of doing transactions, you have this e-wallet, and it's very smooth, and you can do it at scale in multiple cities in the West Bank, sitting on your computer. So that, that would be very, very possible. When it comes to scaling, which is this is what the most important thing is, Palestine has many opportunities. But if you really want to have a product that are gonna, you know, um, you know move things around, uh, Middle East is the way to go, and the world is there. So let's say you want to expand to the region, these e wallets would lose value because the payment gateway that you have to use is a different payment gateway. And if the Jordanian pays to you or Saudi pays to you, they can't use the e wallets that are locally here. Uh, this is a challenge for the product. So, you know, if you're piloting in Palestine, this is great if it's actually adapted well. Um, but then once you expand, you will have to use other I see. And and before we uh, sum up this uh, about this topic, um, what are the five or like a couple of uh, things you see Palestinian ecosystem should do, or or what are the you know important steps needed to make sure the ecosystem grows well? considering the existing problems and a new added up problem because of COVID-19 and so on. So what are the, you know, I'd say key tips you have uh, for uh, rebuilding the Palestinian startup ecosystem, uh, if you could briefly point out some of the steps needed? You know, when it comes to the COVID-19 context on being able to utilize it well, um, I've, wrote, I've written an article on the potential of e-commerce in Palestine um, amid the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. We've seen a lot of businesses. If you check your Facebook feed as a Palestinian, everyone is delivering. Um, and this is massive because now people for the first time on the demand on the supply side, they're actually experiencing the value of being able to order something, getting it to your doorstep. And the startups should definitely utilize this in the sense that, um, first of all, you have people that have tried it, people are open to it. And it's a very interesting thing to do when you actually get a group of businesses like, I'll give you an example. A supermarket isn't going to deliver forever. Um, you know, a supermarket just wants to go with its own operation. But they're like, okay, we'll deliver for the next month. But then I don't think that many supermarkets are like, this is very long term. So uh, an entrepreneur can come in. And by the way, as mission, we we're, we're looking for people who would be interested to start something like this. And they would go to like 10 supermarkets and say, you know, we will do the whole ordering and delivery for you. We'll put it on our platform and we'll just take a very small fee uh, per order. And, and, you know, you yeah. can do that for flowers, you can do that for gym equipment, whatever it is. Um, so that's an opportunity that COVID-19 has created. In the general context, and, and, I'll, and I'll finish with this, um, I think as an ecosystem, um, you know, I mentioned education, I mentioned the culture, uh, but I think one of the things we definitely need to do is start talking to each other more and starting to understand what certain gaps we see as a whole ecosystem. Uh, because uh, you know, an ecosystem, is, you can't control how it grows, but at least you can control some of the relations. Talking to each other more, understanding how we can actually contribute as part of a puzzle that completes itself, you know, rather than having multiple people in multiple areas. I'll give you an example. Mission as an organization doesn't have office spaces. What we do is that we utilize office spaces in Ramallah. There are many office spaces yeah. in Ramallah. We don't want to create the next one and say, you know, yeah. people can well. We use the office spaces that are here. Our, entre our entrepreneurs are split like actually across two different cities and three different incubators, uh, which, you know, is absolutely fine because, you know, it will happen in many areas, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of an approach where, you know, how can we make sure that we don't reinvent the wheel and, and cover the gaps that are existing in that system? So that's one thing we can start with as, uh, as a startup. That's amazing. So I believe there's a very important uh, necessity to bring in the entrepreneurs, the policymakers, uh, maybe the potential investors, and also people from the international uh, side to come together and you know start a discussion. What are the necessities? What are the opportunities? And how different uh, sectors can play a role? How academician, academicians can play a role? How policy people can play a role? That's something which we have been doing through our development program called uh, Public-Private Partnership by Youth. Um, and then I will uh, 
in, in the end, there will be a sharing by Hamdi, our city partner, who will be sharing about uh, you know his vision about having Good City Foundation and PPVOA youth here. Uh, so before that, uh, Daud, thank you so much for your sharing. Uh, and then I will love to learn about uh, the health side and uh, you know how the global shapers are tackling this issue, not a random you know COVID uh, problem or any other health issue. It's about the mental thing which uh, uh, many people around the world are facing. Um, and especially during this uh, long quarantine, it's getting harder for us to stay mentally resilient. And uh, there are a few, few you know, uh, stereotypes regarding mental health as well. Uh, some might not take it seriously like a physical health uh, and so on. So I'd love to learn about the project called Inhale and Exhale. Uh, we have Gaida and Taima here. Uh, so initially, if Gaida could start, what really inspired you to start this project and how it looks like in Palestine, like especially about uh, mental health, how people are aware about it and uh, what are the problems going on there and how you are trying to uh, solve it and, and take a lead here. So that would be great. Um, hi, Shadman. Um, hello to everyone uh, watching us live. Uh, my name is uh, Raida Hamoude. Uh, I'm 23 years old. Um, I'm a content creator, uh, translator slash global shaper. And I'm proud to say that I coordinate an extraordinary team interested in the matter of uh, the mental health here in Palestine. But before I sail into uh, details, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude for Shadman and all the uh, foundations involved um, in coordinating such event uh, and giving us the chance as youth to express um, our humble solutions uh, in regard of so many issues in our society, locally and internationally. And one of them happens to be the matter of, or the subject of the mental health. Um, I know by fact that when we speak about uh, such thing or the mental health, uh, someone might think that it's sensitive, problematic, and complicated. Um, and for the fact, I know that all of these terms are true. Uh, and this is why we have chosen to uh, create such uh, initiative to break stereotypes and to break the taboo that has been oppressed on the people who uh, mentally suffer, let's say. Uh, and so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please meet our most uh, recent uh, launched project, uh, Inhale, Exhale. We help you one breath at a time. Uh, why this project? Uh, why this title? And why? Okay. And why now? But before I but before I sail into another details in regard to this uh, project, let's not forget that on October 10th, the world celebrates an international day for global mental health uh, education, and internationally addressing facts, one out of four people in this universe actually is in need of a psychiatrist. And so, in Palestine, and to give you a closer look and brief look on uh, to this regard. Uh, the mental health unit in the Ministry of Health in Palestine, led by Dr. Samah Jaber, is leading, and her team, of course, they're leading um, a great role in, let's say, fulfill their duties towards people who actually, people who actually suffer. And ever since this unit was established, it worked on implementing a strategy, a clear one that goes with the overflow of the mental health, oh, sorry, of the, of the Ministry of Health here uh, in Palestine in, re, in regard of developing mental health services available uh, to all. So this unit is working all over Palestine to provide the best possible services to all diverse categories within the Palestinian societies. Not to mention that this unit, alongside the WHO, uh, they uh, they helped in producing or issuing three copies of the mental health uh, strategies. The last one was the National Strategic Plan for Mental Health in 2019. They also issued a a booklet on depression uh, that was distributed among involved centers to raise awareness of the mental health uh, culture. And now moving on uh, and answering your question, Sadman, to the most repeated term during the past few months, uh, and as 
my my team once said that uh, projects, such projects, the exhale inhale project, are come originally from the wound of the coronavirus. I know it sounds bizarre. I know it sounds crazy, but actually, uh, we were be, we were able to launch our project in such extraordinary times, believing that um, our initiative is actually what it is. It's actually a youth-inspired initiative that aims to focus on the topics that fall under the category of psychological stress facing youth in Palestine. This initiative actually revolves, uh, revolves around conducting workshops, creating booklets, and hosting roundtables and discussions which can help raise awareness and help young people dealing with stress to cope and identify ways and methods in which they can enhance their overall well-being. And so before writing our project proposal, actually, we sat down and we met and we reached out to experts in the field. Among them was Dr. Samah Jabir. Uh, she's the head of the mental health unit in the, in the Ministry of, um, of uh, Health in Palestine. Uh, we've met with Dr. Mahmoud Khawaja. He's a psychiatrist. Dr. Amal Hidl, she's a social worker, slash psychologist. She works at Birzeit University. We sat down with these experts in order to shed light on the most important keywords that somehow exist in Palestine under the category of the mental health. Uh, it's not enough to be passionate. You have to somehow to be professional in order to, to make people and other in the community you're living in to believe in, 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 the, in the importance of, of, of your project. We're all passionate. Uh, no one can deny that. But we had to reach out to experts so that they can lead us and open the path towards us and, and somehow lead us to what are the activities we aim to conduct in the very um, close future. That's amazing. And and do you think that there is a dire necessity, uh, not just during COVID-19, also yeah. as, as Palestine throughout the course of history has been going through a lot of uh, troubles yeah. and uh, mental well-being is an important thing, uh, which maybe often was not taken care of. Uh, do you think yeah. it is necessary uh, for you know the education system to talk about these things when we talk about uh, physical health issues, what might, you know, how our body works, Shall we also start learning about how the mind works and how to keep the mind healthy and things like that? Along with that, how do you see the new generations coming up uh, yeah. to talk about this? So I believe um, you you have few plans to take lead in it. And yeah. uh, how do you foresee NXL working with the institutes to uh, you know make sure mental health is talked in the mainstream education system? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, how do you foresee young people? And and I would say like. What has been the trait of young people when you introduce in Hell Excel? What's their participation and what yep. I would say makes you hopeful about the future of such projects in Palestine? Uh, Taima can also maybe participate uh, and, and share your uh, aspects as well. I believe you are using certain booklets and search certain social media uh, platforms as well. So that that would be great if uh, Raida and Taima could together share about that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, so. Mental health is something that uh, has been uh, tabooed a lot in our community. It has been miscommunicated a lot, especially um, you, uh, with, with the barrier of language. Um, if you do not speak the language of the person in front of you, especially in such a taboo and sensitive um, um, topic, you, you will not get uh, you know the results that you hope, uh, have hoped for. And I think that's this project has tackled so many uh, barriers, it tackled so many problems in one. It tackled uh, the language barrier, uh, creating a content that is um, reliable, that is easy, that is um, youth-oriented uh, in Arabic. Um, also having it available um, just with, in, in the hands of youth, whether it's a website, a social media um, platform, or a booklet uh, that is uh, a fun, I, I will share my screen uh, in a bit showing you uh, how we uh, aim for a fun, uh, user-friendly um, design for it. We used um, a language that you just talk with your friend in the street with. That is also understandable by most Arabic speakers in different dialects across uh, the MENA region. Um, so yes, I think just aiming, going to the right audience with the right uh, language, 
with some reliable information because this is a huge deal. Uh, we don't often find uh, reliable data and information shared uh, in social media. And um, um, this just makes everything, it just makes it worse for youth to read misinformation about such sensitive topics. Right, would you like to I add see, anything? exactly. Yes. Yeah, um, can I say This is why I'm so proud of the team members that I have among the team. Um, before before we continue to your um, second question, I just like to um, to focus on the the, the keywords actually that uh, all the experts and all the people who we, who who um, we met uh, in order to help us you know uh, organize our project actually the the keywords where uh, they were all you know in common they talked about the PTSD they talked about anxiety and stress they talked about depression and and and, and especially not to forget. Uh, the, the 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 Israeli occupation and and all the uh, all the oppressions it is uh, using uh, um, upon us and so and, and not to forget the 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 stereotypical image that has been somehow oppressed on the people who suffer from any uh, mental health um, illness and especially the the key main differences between a psychiatrist and a social worker and a counselor. And so these keywords will help us somehow focus on the nature of the activities we aim to conduct uh, later on uh, in the following, hopefully, next month. And uh, before also continuing to your second question, I'd like to mention that uh, our team is actually diverse. We have people who work as translators, um, content creators. Uh, we have people who are students, such as Taima, uh, Asil, uh, Hamze, uh, Brenna, Rawan. I'm so proud of them, and Lamis as well, uh, and Dima. Uh, we're all somehow passionate about this method, and we're all working to create a better understanding uh, of the mental health uh, uh, in, in Palestine. And I did uh, forget someone. Yes, she's uh, Rawan. Rawan is also an active team member um, among the team. You can continue now, that's Shazman. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Like, uh, it's not just you are you know, uh, doing mental awareness, uh, which we often see people are doing, but then you're also yep. trying to come up with information about how the situation looks like uh, in the yep. real field. And then you're working with the doctors, you're working with young people. Uh, I yes. believe in the long run, uh, you know, the policymakers will uh, take it in count and, you know, see how they can help out uh, people with mental issues to uh, get through it, um, not just in COVID, in the long run as well. And that's also interesting that there are a lot of jargons and keywords being used around the mental health, uh, you know, area. But then often yep. these are misunderstood and, you know, mismatched uh, about the by the mass people. So that's exactly. great that you are focusing on that and you're know, trying to make sure that how the differences are and why we should focus on this. Uh, that's amazing about uh, the mental health. And uh, while we are in quarantine, uh, it's really important for us to stay healthy and positive, which I personally have been trying. And I've also faced a lot of problems, a lot of anxiety, anxiety and a lot of, you know, uh, you know, uncertainties there. But then how can we use the best out of what we have? That's something we can learn. Um, that's amazing, uh, Raida and Taima. And uh, to, to, you know, before we uh, finish the discussion here or, you know, uh, come to Hamdi to share about his plan uh, with us, um, I would like to share that, um, like when we were talking about the coronavirus, when we were having a lot of webinars across the world, we have talked a lot about the problems, how maybe governments are facing, uh, uh, failing, how, uh, you know, the economy is shattered and so on. But then the purpose of City of the Cities has been to talk about the solution, to talk about how different countries are tackling the issues. And as a part of that, when we came to learn about Palestine, we saw that the global shape is from the hub and Gaza Sky Geek has been playing a major role to boost the, uh, you know, the boost Palestine and, you know, handle this current crisis. And uh, it's totally driven by young people. It's uh, always by the young global shapers as well. And uh, they have been playing a major role here. Um, so before we end uh, and uh, move on to Hamdi for his sharing uh, about the bigger plan about the City Foundation in Palestine, uh, do any of us have anything to share, anything to sum up? 
uh, and or, or you know let the people here in life know about uh, different things. Uh, and also, I believe the friends will uh, be sharing their website. Uh, Hanin mentioned, and uh, Daida will also be sharing more information about that so that they, we can have a look. But before that, we would also like to say that after each webinar, Good City Foundation uh, publishes blog. So obviously, one hour, one and a half hour is not a, uh, enough time to share everything. Uh, but then we will be coming up with a blog where we will have detailed information about each of these uh, solutions. And just to uh, let people know that we have been working on the learning behind this webinar for almost a month. Uh, we have been getting into different calls. We have been getting detailed information about each of these projects, which we will be publishing very soon. But before that, Gaida, Hanin, Lamis, or any other friends, if you have any anything to share, just a heads up, and then we'll move to yeah. about that. So I want to add for what I already shared that for us in Palestine and for Gaza Sky Geeks, we are looking at things as opportunities. So we're looking at the uh, this online and remote uh, learning through COVID-19 time as an opportunity for us uh, for for example the hackathon that we did we would never uh, could do a hackathon for west bank and gaza together for people from all over palestine at the same time if we are not doing this remotely and we are now trying to share the experience and knowledge between people from outside the world with the maximum number of people from west bank and gaza and this is a thing that uh, came positively from the covid 19 so I want to advise everyone to look at it as an opportunity and to look at the positive side of uh, uh, this time and try to do their best to learn and to do things better. Um, I think um, I also want to share something is that during the COVID-19, uh, you know, the pandemic, most of our, most of our target audience um, during the digital transformation just transformed to uh, social media platforms, to the online space. So I think that gave us a lot of, um, as, as Hani said, it gave us a lot of um, perspective. It gave us a lot of uh, opportunity and potential to reach not only the people that we, uh, we in uh, in our in our zone uh, physically, but um, the people that uh, want to reach us, uh, whether they are in another country, they're, whether they they speak another language, um, they can easily translate and be live uh, with us. Uh, so I think um, I just invite them for everyone to take the chance to um, transform whatever ideas they have uh, inclusively. Um, to everyone online, um, websites are now easily made through tools. Um, social media is open for everyone, and uh, it is it's such a great chance to um, just be human instead of uh, identifying with um, a country. Exactly, exactly. Like uh, technology and internet is is borderless, and it makes us more connected. And there's a lot to explore here, a lot beyond Facebook and social media platforms. <laughs> so we got to make uh, the best out of it. Uh, I believe Lamis uh, would love to share something from her side. Uh, Lamis is the uh, curator of Global Shapers from Allah Hub. So La Ramis, uh, can you please uh, share? Yes. Yes. So uh, first of all, thank you, Shadman, and thanks for all the shapers here. You did all very great. So Basically, I want to finalize that uh, we are shapers, we uh, deliver the message and we create impact. So anyone want to join us uh, with Ramallah Hub or any hub in the world and anyone feels that and it's very important because uh, all our emotions or our uh, feels, you know, like increase the G during the pandemic uh, in a lot of aspects. So anyone uh, have this potential to share and create impact in the society can reflect in their own hubs in the world. And uh, by this way, we can really create a change in the society. And uh, at the end, I would thank Hamdi. He is one of our amazing shapers for uh, connecting uh, us with you, Shatman. This is amazing. And uh, I hope that all the audience um, 
you know, have a great time uh, while we were talking today. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Lames. It happens that all of us are actually shapers. I represent uh, Dhaka Hub. So uh, I'm, I'm from Good City Foundation. I'm uh, also a uh, shaper in Dhaka Hub. And uh, Dhaka Hub has also taken a lot of initiatives to handle this COVID crisis by uh, providing people with food and other necessary things, disinfecting places, and so on. And uh, I believe uh, Ramallah Hub is really active in Palestine. So the Palestinian young people who are making a change, doing something sustainable, uh, please join the Shapers. That's an amazing community. And uh, before that, uh, before ending, um, we would like to give the floor to the man who has been working for a long time with us behind, uh, Hamdi. Uh, he happens to be a very good friend of mine. He happens to be a very good Shaper and also the city partner of Good City Foundation in Palestine. And uh, Hamdi, the floor is yours. Uh, that would be great if you could share about your work and what you are planning to do in Palestine with Good City Foundation. Uh, thank you, bro. Thank you a lot. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Hamdi, a uh, civil engineer at Strategic the Planning Department at Target Company. Uh, a global uh, shaper also. Uh, uh, in addition of being a city partner at Good City, uh, city Foundation since 2018. At first, I was very delighted to bring the first Good City Foundation, which has helped us to think deep and deep for our cities, and also which make me more integrated and interested in such issue that is related to help our environment and to exploit our youth to be effective in uh, the society. Now I am uh, displaying, displaying the values and the vision we are standing uh, for the vision, uh, building a generation of maximum capabilities and network of individual and collective skills, a hub for entrepreneur businesses and uh, based on well-designed uh, learning system. And about our mission, it's a mission that began in Hong Kong, a projection Asia perspective and values, linking it with uh, Africa and Europe. A bridge the intermediate public-private partnership project through annual conference, seasonal workshop and round table and focus group with uh, funders. Advocate uh, and device information circulation through the platform connecting stakeholder in the globe, explore topics and issue that concern city development for the future regarding education, economy uh, and technology, etc. Reshaping the community into open future uh, work uh, force lab. Why Palestine? Exactly. Uh, yes, why Palestine? Strategic location, center of the MENA, bridge between Asia, Africa, Europe. Palestine is a virgin land uh, for variety inf of investment. It provides incentive package for startup, lack of spaces, special, uh, uh, specialized incubator, co working space, accelerator, uh, etc. Uh, spinning of conversation for public and private partnership among the entrepreneurs and government uh, bodies, learning from a uh, uh, Palestinian uh, age-old culture and heritage, uh, access globe uh, market with more than 18 commercial agreements. Palestine has access to the number of wide spectrum market, intra-regional trade, treatment, uh, simplified producer and customer, which is easy, access international market, and more than uh, uh, 18 of the Palestinians are educated and more than 53% uh, 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 are unemployed, given the Palestinian statistics. So now uh, I want to jump for the theme of the uh, Good City Foundation Palestine what and why we bring this uh, to Palestine. Uh, about the theme, uh, first of all, the uh, fabric, urban fabric learning is a major key for individual empowerment and social cohesion. How can the urban fabric support education? What is uh, the maximum capacity of the building to be used for multi-functional activities? And secondly, uh, entertainment, education and entertainment are interrelated. Education and entertainment media is power. 
What is the outcome of merging education and entertainment for day and night plans? Uh, finally, self-sufficiency. How can the educational institution be self-dependent? The flexibility of both uh, the society and the institution to develop the change. Uh, if the main stakeholders for education industry is all of us, how can its concept affect in the industry? Learning from Palestinian emerging startup ecosystem. Yeah. And what we are uh, focusing on some of the most of uh, 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 focusing on the some of the most pressing issue on Palestine: lack of self motivation by students to grow through technical and vocational training, and the community negative perception of this type of training. Weak uh, academic performance of students enrolled in the technical and vocational education. Difficulties of enrollment in higher education institution by technical and vocational education graduate, the high establishment of and uh, operating course of technical and vocational training institution, deficiencies in adopting change in technology, difficulties in obtaining employment opportunity and access to job market. Uh, what's behind this the, the experience? To have yeah. the chance to implement uh, our vision and ideas in an applied project linked uh, with a worldwide investor, utilize yeah. the experience and the connection to host Good City Foundation and uh, Future City Summit uh, a Vision in Palestine. And finally, uh, what's the next? Establishing public private partnership and connected Palestinian industries with worldwide market, creating the base for open future workforce lab. And if we can like to say the vision of for Palestine to 2030. Exactly, just just uh, people who joined us right now, uh, I'd like to give a background about what we're talking about. Uh, so we're talking about our development program called Public Private Partnership by you. Uh, Good City Foundation as a developer organization based in Hong Kong has been playing major role in the emerging countries and how to learn about the opportunities and the problems in different cities how to learn about the public and private sector uh, what's going on there and how we can play a role to march uh, resources across borders across regions and ensure the growth of different startups growth of uh, government projects or uh, a growth of the ecosystem uh, overall so this particular development program ppp by youth has been running successfully in country uh, in, in cities like bali bangkok manila Jakarta, Bandung, and again Bali, and so on. We have stepped in uh, different uh, domains uh, from health tech, food tech, uh, sustainable architecture, uh, tourism, um, fintech, and so on. Uh, and as a part of that, we have raised some very successful startups from each of the cities. We have been working uh, with the startups. Uh, and Good City Foundation has an in-house venture platform. Uh, we have been facilitating the startups for further growth by capacity building, advisory support, uh, investment and so on. And um, moving from uh, ASEAN to other markets in South Asia and uh, in, in the Middle East, in the MENA region, uh, that's our focus right now. And as a part of that, we will be moving to Palestine with our development program, PPP by Youth, Public Private Partnership by Youth, led by Hamdi here. And uh, Hamdi was actually sharing his vision uh, in Palestine. And while we were talking to other people like Hanin with uh, Daoud, Rula, Taima, Lamis, we always found that there's a necessity to bring all the people and people from different sectors to come together and start a dialogue, talk about the problems and find a way out, which Good City Foundation has been doing through PP by Youth. And uh, we will develop the framework more for Palestine. And uh, Hamdi has been taking the lead on that. Um, and Hamdi, so yeah, please uh, go ahead with the sharing. I just gave a brief context about what we are talking about here. So please uh, continue the sharing from your side. Uh, I believe we lost Hamdi. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so before um, we get Hamdi back, um, I'd like to just uh, continue the discussion. We were talking about uh, the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Uh, we were talking about uh, health uh, and also education in Palestine. And uh, there's a lot to learn. And the purpose of this uh, city and the cities is that how cities can learn from a city. Right? It's about cities and learning from each other 
uh, through uh, you know what we are doing, and then things which are happening in Palestine might, might be a great, great learning point for people from maybe Bangladesh, from India, from Pakistan, from Indonesia, Philippines, or from uh, Belgium, from Netherlands, or even uh, in countries like uh, Brazil, Argentina, US. So we never know which solutions are going to work where. And uh, as a resource aggregator, as a development organization, Good City Foundation has always looked forward to that. And uh, I believe this webinar was a good learning point for all of us. Uh, and uh, we'll be again uh, sharing some blogs on it. And uh, we'll be posting, commenting uh, the website of Inhale Excel, Gaza Sky Geeks, and other initiatives we have been talking about in the comment section of this particular post on Good City Foundation page. And we'll be mentioning extensively about all this in our uh, blog. So I believe we are pretty much done with the sharing. And uh, Hamdi, if we have you here, uh, please, uh, the, the floor is yours. And uh, you are sharing about something. And that would be great if we could continue the discussion and uh, we could end the webinar. I believe we lost him again. Um, <laughs> Um, I think Hamdi is uh, having issues with the internet connection. So uh, thank you everyone uh, for being with us for more than an hour. Uh, thanks to all the shapers and solvers here who are um, working to tackle these issues. And uh, I just got a text from Hamdi that he lost the Wi-Fi. So uh, I believe it's uh, pretty much the end of the webinar. And uh, thank you everyone again. And uh, we'll be back with our next episode. Uh, in, in a new market and we will talk about some of the new solutions uh, and amazing things going on in, um, in the cities. So thank you so much, everyone, and take care and have a good day. Um, goodbye and uh, take care. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Goodbye.